this is TVCL, and welcome to the Practically True podcast. I was recently having a conversation with a friend about Christianity. She expressed how she would very much like to have faith. For the joy and solace it visibly gave so many people around her, she thought it a fine thing to be able to believe in God and salvation. It just so happened that she found it to be simply unbelievable. A short way into our discussion, she gave her reason for this, and truly, it is a profound one. She said, I cannot believe in a God who makes me unable to believe in him. She was not being tautological or trite. She explained that she simply could not understand that if this God was so loving and cared for us so much that he would ever be unbelievable to anyone. Some people did believe in him, but some people apparently had hearts and minds that were closed to him. How could this be? As a mother, she wondered how a parent, especially an all-powerful parent, would ever allow himself to be unknown to his children. Free choice she could understand. If God were known to us and then we rejected him, fair enough. But to remain unknown, that was too much. I'd had my own inclinations of this problem on my path to Christianity. But before this conversation, I'd never heard them expressed so clearly and succinctly. What's more, I was unable to answer her question there and then. Since she posed it, some ideas have come to light which have revealed to me an answer. And that is what I will explore here. Just before that, let's consider just how odd the issue is. Anyone looking at Christianity from the outside could point out that it cannot be demonstrated beyond the shadow of a doubt. Indeed, my own convictions are not formed around final, certain proof. I could not demonstrate to someone with mathematical certainty that Christianity is true, and I challenge anyone else to try and do so. Yet, believing it is true requires the belief that it is objectively true. Not only is it not a matter of opinion, but it contains the belief in a God who is the all-powerful God of all things and every person, who wants every one of his children to know him. In light of this, the unprovability of Christianity can make sense from the outside, but how does it make sense from the inside? The answer comes right down to freedom, love and freedom. That is why God is mysterious to us. When I was eventually able to do so, I explained to my friend that God might be our Holy Father, but our relationship with him is unique and unlike any other kind. In the case of a good parent, they want what is best for their children and want to give that to them. And here is the important part. A good parent can teach, guide, and even demand that their child moves towards what is best for them. But a good parent cannot force the child to choose what is best for them once the child is able to be free. Let's explore this a bit more. First, let's think about love. Everyone can recognise that true love requires freedom. Each one of us recognises that if we were ever forced to love someone and were not allowed to give that love freely, that would be a shadow or a perversion of what love really means. And so, of course, the idea is that God loves us. God wants us to love him. But to that end, he has given us the freedom to choose that love so that it's of the purest kind. This allows us to understand his distance. God has allowed a gap between us and him, so that we can choose to close that gap. This has everything to do with why he remains mysterious. The gap that God has allowed between us and him 
is not only in physical or spiritual distance, but in belief. The thing is, freedom means that God has allowed us the ability to deny him. In word, in deed, but also in thought. As Christians, we believe that God permeates the universe, at least to some degree, that there is evidence of him in the very air you breathe. In that respect, he is right at the end of your nose. Yet, he has allowed you not to see him if you don't want to. This is because knowing God is a step towards accepting him, and accepting him is a step towards loving him, and because he loves us, he has allowed us to stand back from this first step, if we so choose. And I think that people know this. People have a vague understanding that if they ever did come to know that God was real, they would have to reevaluate a lot of things in a serious way. You have to think, what if he did reveal himself? Of course, we Christians already believe that God walked among us as Christ, but even then, his full godly being was subdued in the form of a man. What if that was blown apart? What if the God of heaven and earth came crashing through the clouds like solar lightning and hit you with such a blow that you had no choice but to believe in him? Most people understand that if this did happen, they would know that they were wrong. And if they knew that they were wrong, they would probably have to change. But, in a sense, there would be no choice anymore. The full majesty of God would be so clear that you would have no choice but to follow him, with no choice but to change. We Christians are told that a time will come when God will come crashing through the sky, and we will see him in his full glory. But until then, he has allowed us this life in which to make our decisions, to choose willingly before the time when every knee shall bow, whether it wants to or not. And so, in the meantime, God remains mysterious because he allows us to be free. The whole thing can be summed up in this quote by Blaise Pascal. To those who wish to see, God gives them sufficient light. To those who do not wish to see, God gives them sufficient darkness. The idea is that God isn't completely mysterious. There's plenty of good reason and evidence that can reveal him, and all in keeping with the world he created. It's not a selective truth, it's the truth, and it's there for anyone who is willing to seek it. On the other hand, he has not made all of these reasons and all of this evidence so overwhelming that it cannot be shut out, twisted, or ignored. Like any good parent, God loves us. And like any good parent, God has given us the freedom to return that love, which also means the freedom to reject him. However, unlike any other parent, God is unique, and our relation to him is also unique. And this allows us to revisit my friend's question. As a mother, she would want her children to know her, so that she could help them have what is best for them. However, in the case of God, God is what is best for his children. He is the very choice that he is allowing them to make, and this choice includes the choice to know him. That is why it not only makes sense, but makes perfect sense that our loving God would allow us to not know him, if we so choose to. And so, it all comes down to choice. One thing that any honest atheist or agnostic should ask themselves is this. If God did turn out to be real, would you really want to know? And an honest answer to this has to cut through the surface. They might say that they want to, but they have to wonder, with all that it would entail, with all that it would demand, with all that it would mean for you, how you live, what you're comfortable with, 
or even your relationships, would you really want to know? And if you don't want to, would you be willing to know? If they ask this question, I believe that, in their heart, each person who asks this question will know why they cannot believe in God. Thank you for your time.